I cannot even describe how I feel about watching this anime. Easily one of the best animes I have seen this year. The animation, the music, the characters, and action is some of the best and I will highly recommend it. The anime I'm talking about is solo leveling with season 1 being 12 episodes and with the most recent announcement of season 2, I am beyond excited. Hello, my name is Bugsy and today I will be reviewing season 1 of solo leveling. This is your spoiler warning. I repeat, there will be spoilers in this video. I will make a very brief statement that is non-spoiler and then you can leave a like on the video and come back once you have seen solo leveling. In short, the MC is pathetic, becomes a real one, in one of the coolest ways possible. By the end of the video, you are going to want to watch the anime if you you haven't already and if you have seen it let me know in the comment section about what you thought of solo leveling sit back relax grab your snacks and listen to why solo leveling is one of the best animes of 2024 Solo Leveling released on January 4th, 2024, which I was completely unaware about. I had only heard of the anime because it was gaining a lot of hype with Kaiju number 8. Okay, I am not going to lie. Within the first 5 minutes of Solo Leveling, I was hooked. Seeing Killer Ants jump heroes was baffling to me. What you mean cuz up to Draco and got tackled and bit by an ant? Why are these ants bulletproof? Why are they so strong? And why are you heroes getting y'all asses whooped? Then of course, our S-Class heroes come to the rescue and take out the weaker ants. We then see a white ant that looks quite serious. The S-Class heroes take out the ant, but it looked like it took more effort than the red ants, which we then see a mob of white ants that come out of the woods. Transitioning to the last scene of the intro, and we see another S-Class hero commanding the lower ranks to fight off against the white ants. We don't know it now, but a lot of the S-Class heroes got murked on the island. Now by what? We do not know. We see Sung Jin Woo is a weak character by the way he talks, walks, and his aura, known as the weakest hunter to ever exist. We see Sung and Lee Jo Hee go into the barrier to tackle the dungeon. We see Sung get stabbed by a goblin who is clearly weak and Juhi is fed up. She doesn't want to see Sung continue to get hurt and she seems to have a romantic interest in him. When it should have been me! Come heal me baby girl please! Eventually, the heroes find a double dungeon which is where shit gets real. There is something very sidious about this dungeon. We eventually see the meme of the king statue and we will see a lot of heroes die. Sung is using his brain which allows a couple of heroes to survive. Sung decides it is best to sacrifice himself so Juhi and Kim can survive. Sung ends up surviving and says, I wish I had another chance. And boom, that's the last time we see him in the dungeon. In my opinion, this was a S class or even a special class dungeon that clearly no one was supposed to find. But it was by fate that Sung would find it and he wakes up given another chance. He receives a second chance, but this time, there is something very different. He has the ability to level up and move from hero class. This is an ability that nobody has, which makes him special. If you are enjoying the video so far, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to watch this video today or with no ads, make sure to click that join button and become a member. I wish I had another chance. <laughs> Sung wakes up and sees that his leg has reappeared and his injuries are gone. Some of the head haunches of the hero's organization come to test him to see if he had a reawakening, which means his natural power has evolved and he could move up in the hero class. The test shows that nothing changed and that he did not have a second awakening. Disappointed are the testers and even Sung, except he can see a video game-like screen. He is confused because he cannot tell if only he can see it or everybody can see it. He ignores his daily task, which was strength training, and ends up in a desert running away from a very big bug. He survives the penalty task and he quickly learns that he is part of a game and he has a role to play. He decides to complete the strength training task the next day, which he ends up leveling up. Ideally, he is a real life video game character who levels up when he gains more experience, able to buy new weapons, upgrade his skills, and even acquire armor, which I think is one of the coolest concepts for a character to level up in a world. This is a perfect way to explain or show how a character has earned their level ups which we do see once Sung goes into a D-class dungeon by himself and we see the confidence slowly building up. And then he faces off against the blue venom fang Asako, which is the king of the swamp. 
Sung is losing until he flashes back to the special dungeon and the evil smile face haunts him. Sung is tired of being the laughing stock of all the hunters. He says, My kindness never saved me. No. What I need now is true strength, and I am not gonna give up until I get it! And with his bare hands, he crushes the armor of the Kasaka and kills it. His confidence is through the roof and he defeats an enemy and levels up quite a bit. I will expand more on Sung as a character in the next section. This is the beginning of our protagonist turning into a legitimate threat. Throughout the anime, we see Sung develop more and rise through the skill level of E class and even up to a B class. In fact, when he starts to evolve, his character model completely changes. He is taller, more muscular, and very confident. Something his sisters and peers around him are not used to seeing. One of the main reasons I love solo leveling is because of Sung Jin Woo. Sung Jin Woo is a character that starts off extremely weak. Him being one of the worst hunters of all time makes his story much better. While there are many characters in anime who start off unnaturally strong or pathetically weak, then become strong out of nowhere, that is not the case for Sung. Sung gaining strength takes a lot more time with trials and tribulations. Sung's vote to enter the dungeon is what allowed all of this to happen. Had he voted not to enter the dungeon, he would have never had a reawakening. While Sung during the time period knew he was not strong enough physically to make a real effort on the group, his intellect is what saved himself, his selflessness is what gained him the power that is bestowed upon him. His determination to live was stronger than death wanting him. This reminds me of One Piece when Luffy asked Nico Robin if she wanted to live. While she could have easily said no, but because of Luffy, she says yes. Her determination to live not only granted her a family that she has long desired, but a life that she is happy to live in. Sung wakes up and realizes he is alive with all his body parts and a new power. While he didn't believe that the attacks on the system were real, he learned the hard way. He decided to take the opportunity to level up. Defeating foes, strength training, and leveling up his own character is what allows him to strive heights that were thought to be impossible. He is the definition of, if you work hard, you will achieve your goals. We see throughout the anime that he slowly is able to defeat stronger foes that he would have never been able to, more or less, have the confidence to defeat them. He looks deaf in the face and laughs. I feel that Sung's character is applicable to real life and why I resonate with the character. Obviously, many of us would not have a reawakening and be given a system that levels up our character. Unless someone does have it and they don't want to expose themselves, they're secretly gaining the strength to rival Goku. Hey, However, I think the idea of the character is that we are all given the chance to elevate ourselves and our character. As people, we have the ability to elevate mentally and physically, literally and not figuratively. If you want to have a more muscular body, you can go to the gym, eat better, which is leveling up your physical. You want to get stronger mentally? Read the books, go to therapy, learn how to control your emotions. Boom, we have leveled up mentally. In life, there are some aspects that we favor more than others, but it's important for there to be balance in your life. During the C-Class raid, where he is forced to kill Huang and the hunters, we see an improvement to his mental strength. At first, he was contemplating if he could go through with killing the humans, but he realized there is only one way to become stronger. That was the vindication that he needed. He knew that he needed to become stronger. He would have to do things that he would not be comfortable doing. This is also shown when we see Sung versus Kang. After Kang decided to kill the prisoners and Sung's friends, Sung had to lock in to protect them. Kang at this point already knew that Sung was way stronger than the E-Class hero, but kept it to himself. Jin Wu asks Kang why is he killing humans, and his answer is simple. He enjoys it. It is fun to him. It is more rewarding to kill humans than it is to kill off monsters. Why do I mention this? Simply because Sung felt bad for killing the humans in the C-Class dungeon. But once he fights Kang and sees a hunter became evil and how they would turn against their belief system, he knew what must be done. Sung is slowly becoming one of my favorite MCs because of the struggles he must face. Seeing the internal struggle that he faces during his trials make him relatable to the viewer. The best part is, he earns every bit of power that he gains. He was not strong from genetics, talent, or fate. He simply was there at the right time and right place. Let's get one of the main things out of the way. The animation in Solo Leveling is supreme to none. One of the best animated animes I have seen in quite some time, which makes sense given that the anime came out early 2024. The animation along with the choreography looks fantastic and is not hard to look at over time. Nothing was overly distracting and hard to look at, which is always a positive. The plot pacing is one of the most impressive things of the anime. With only 12 episodes, it felt straight to the point and there was not any filler. It progressed the story quickly without feeling rushed. The last episode having the perfect conclusion for the first season and then leading into the second season. What I really enjoy about Solo Leveling is that all the questions are not answered immediately. 
An example, what happened on the island between the murderer's ants and the S-Class heroes that fell? There was not a singular villain in this anime, or there might be, that we do not know about. However, as of right now, there is not one, which leaves room for many options of whom the villain can be, or if the heroes are the actual villain. One thing that I want to point out is the music. I thoroughly enjoyed the music and think it adds an amazing aspect to the anime. My favorite song so far is Dark Aura Level 2, the OST that played, during the episode when Sung began decimating the C-Class heroes. The song choice along with the action was brilliant, and I hope to see more of that in Season 2. In conclusion, I highly recommend Solo Leveling to any anime fans or recommending it to a newcomer of the genre. I think it is a perfect length for someone who is skeptical about anime and for those who want a new anime to watch. Yes, I could have gone into more detail regarding the plot, but I want to save some of the action for you all. Season 2 is on the way and I am beyond excited for it. Similar to Fully Cooly and how it was only 6 episodes but it got straight to the point. For those who enjoy Fully Cooly, would rewatch it and if you didn't enjoy it, you never watched it again. The first 5-10 to 10 minutes of episode 1 had me hooked and I'm sure it had many others hooked as well. It has been a while since I've been excited about an anime, but so lovely definitely brought back that excitement. If you do end up enjoying the anime, I highly recommend you check out the manga and catch up to the most recent chapter. For those who have already seen the anime, let me know in the comment section down below. What did you like and what did you not like? Hopefully, everyone who has seen this video already watched Soul Leveling, but if you haven't, this video entices you to watch the anime. I will see you guys when season 2 comes out with another video essay. It has been your boy Bugsy. Make sure to leave a like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Let's try and break 100 likes and you will have a guaranteed solo leveling season 2 video essay. Peace.